You're listening to That Radio FM, the students' radio station for QK Academy. Today we'll be dealing with the school political campaign, some world news and entertainment. First up with the entertainment segment is Salmon on issues of copyright infringement. Recently, in the, in the recent weeks, uh, Robin Fick and Pharrell Williams have been accused of copying Marvin Gaye's song. I don't know the title of the song, but I know the title of Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke's song, which is Blurred Lines. All right? And Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke had to pay a staggering $7.4 million. All right? I mean, if you think about it, imagine how many Panina medals that can buy you. That is a lot, right? Now, this, this, this sets a precedent for artists that want to sample songs, right? And it makes you think, am I allowed to take this bit of the song? Am I not allowed? Am I going to have to pay that much money? And honestly, I think that gay's children were being a bit childish, right? I think they should have let them kick the song. But, I mean, I don't know. It's a bit of a controversial topic. My opinion might not matter compared to the law. So, uh, that's just my take on it. Thank you very much for listening. This has been That Radio FM. Hasn't it got to do with copyright infringement? I mean, yeah, it's got a lot to do with it. I mean, you, when, you, when you copy a song like that, right, when you take the beat, you got to ask the artist or someone very close, like Marvin Gaye's children, ask, am I allowed to use this particular beat? Because it sounds a lot like yours, and I don't want to get involved with copyright issues. Because what can happen is that when you make a song, you you own it, right? Your name is printed all over it, every little millimetre, right? And if someone takes it, then you can accuse them of copying the songs, because it's your copyright. It's your right, but you don't have the right to copy. And that's where the term copyright comes from. It comes from the 1520s, when the old men tried to copy the rights of other people but they said no you're not allowed and then they said you know what we should establish a rule for when people try to copy your rights they're not allowed and they have to pay a fine now back then they used to get killed but now I think it's a bit more lenient thanks for that interesting insight Salmon moving on is our next entertainment item Vicky and Alba were speaking about a more sensitive issue which is Chance the Rapper's new movie so Alba t- tell me about uh, Chance the Rapper's new film Okay, hello Vicky. Um, well, basically, it's about the protagonist, Chance the Rapper, who plays a really recluse man who has really suicidal den- tendencies. And you know, in the first scene, you see him try to kill himself with a you know cling film, but obviously he's unable to. Um, and he's just continuously looking through forums, just get, trying to get tips online on how he can achieve you know killing himself. And he manages to find a website called Mr. Happy where you're able to pay for a painless death or, and he chooses, he just wants to be shot um, in the head by a gun, you know, painlessly. Um, and while, while he's working on his dead-end job, which is, you know, um, with tools and DIY kits, um, he meets a girl um, at his work and obviously they have a good time. Um, I'm not going to spoil the rest of it. Not talking about the end, but what do you think uh, Chance the Rapper was trying to like, show and express in this film? Yeah, um, well, I think he was really trying to perceive, like, uh, you know, how in reality there is not a happy ending, but still, you know, there are small, trivial things that will make you happy. Yet, you know, after, me, after years and years of not having any social interaction with anyone, and then he meets this girl, and he really does, like, brighten up. It's really just taking in consideration the small things of, you know, people spending 10 minutes just to have a little conversation with you or just, you know, small things like someone giving you a little small headband or a little gift from who knows what or giving you your letters. Like, this type of thing is so significant and like you were saying earlier, you know, People always look for the big things in life to show that someone actually really cares about them because some people just say, you know, no one cares, but really, everyone has that someone special that, you know, actually thinks about, or actually cares about where they are, who they are, and, you know, what, what's going on with them. Thank you, Alba. Now back to Vicky and Salmon with some juicy views and news about X Factor New Zealand. 
So Simon, what do you think about <laughs> Natalia Gills, the X Factor, no, yeah, X Factor New Zealand judge who uh, verbally abused a, um, a contestant? I mean, I don't think it was right. I think it was absolutely uncalled for. Uh, the guy took it well. I mean, eventually, as he said, he looked good and stuff. But I mean, the women and the guy, I, just, I think it's unprofessional. It's not something you should do on a show like that. I mean, you've got an opinion, and then you've got insulting a guy, and uh, that's just not right. It's not right at all for a judge, especially someone that no one in the world knows. And she's talking about originality, and uh, she looks like a Nicki Minaj beg. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's right, to be honest. <laughs> So, because she bullied the, uh, the contestant, and a lot of people are bullying her on Twitter and social media and stuff, do you think it's right for people to do that since she bullied, bullied the contestant? I mean, it's a bit of a difficult question because uh, it brings a lot of morality and philosophy into this, right? But I mean, she, she obviously deserves a bit of a taste of her own medicine to see what it feels like, but they shouldn't take it too far because then they'll become what she was. And that's not right, right? Because then you might learn to become like that woman, and then you might you might expose that behaviour to other people, right? And I don't think that should be a lad. It's not right. Great response. That radio FM. Oh. Okay, Salmon. Thanks for that. I'm sure we all agree. Bullying isn't right. Hi, I'm Sarah Ventra. Hi, I'm Sarah Hobb. And we're both the Conservative candidates for this election. Here are our five-point long-term economic plan. Our first point is to make sure that we renegotiate the terms of our membership with the EU and hold a referendum in 2017 on whether we should stay or leave. Also, we'd like to eradicate the deficit by 2018. Our third point is to make sure that we retain the nuclear deterrent because we think it's vitally important for our security. Also, we'd like to protect the school's budget at £90.1 billion. And our last point is to gradually and sustainably increase spending on renewable energy and environmental conservation. This means that we will only be increasing the spending on environment if we have more money in our economy. Thank you. The radio show. <laughs> Hello, my name is Albin Aslami and I'm the Labour candidate for the school general election. Out of my manifesto, I've picked out five points that I will introduce today. Point number one will be balancing the books. As we know, we are in a budget deficit and I aim to turn this into a budget surplus by the end of my term. Point number two will be cutting down on immigration and controlling it. As we know, we have a lucrative benefit system here in the UK. By implementing a two-year requirement scheme before immigrants can claim benefits will mean that our immigration controls can be measured and it will not be abused. Point number three will be cutting youth unemployment. As we know, youth unemployment is a huge burden to a taxpayer. So by guaranteeing apprenticeship schemes for people that have been claiming job seekers allowance for one year, it will allow youths to enter work and increase their human capital. Point number four will be cutting working class tax and increasing the top, top end tax rate. So as we know, Conservatives have reduced that to 45p per pound and we aim to increase this and increase our budget surplus by doing this. Point number five will be removing austerity and introducing it at a later stage as packages as it will be crucial for our economic growth to prosper. By removing austerity, we will increase government spending and we will increase the potential growth for the UK in the, in the short run and in the long run, by in reintroducing these packages, we can control our budget again. Thank you very much. That radio show. Hello, I am Joanna, and I am one of the candidates of the Liberal Democrats for the school general election. I am here to speak about some of our policies. First and foremost, I'd like to address the issue about the European Union. The European Union, in our eyes, is a very positive force, and we should support and encourage staying in the European Union. The UK should become more integrated in the European Union, and of course, we are planning to hold a referendum if we win the general election to ask the people whether we should adopt the euro as soon as feasible. In terms of the environment, we have very ambitious plans over control of climate change. We would like to transfer the UK to renewable energy sources as soon as possible. 
and that is to improve the lives of everyone and, of course, the lives of our children in the future. In terms of taxation, we will have to take more money from the richer, but that's only to be able to balance the gap in society. We have very strong laws to protect the rights and liberties, including giving the civil liberties protection from the judiciary rather than from politicians. We want equal rights for everyone, which means each person with different beliefs will have the right to express them without any issue. In terms of education, we'd like to give schools more funds in order for them to have more freedom and liberty to address issues themselves without relying too much on the government. We are planning to put more money into welfare, but not too much of it. We don't want people to be too dependent on the state, but we do want them to be able to find a decent job and live in a decent condition. Finally, the point that I would really like to address is our current system. Our constitution is uncodified. It's very dangerous because the people do not know what rights they have. Things seem to get lost and we rely on precedents which don't necessarily apply to our day and age. For that reason, one of the main things that we will be changing if we are in government is the constitution. We plan on codifying the constitution. I am Joanna and I am one of the Liberal Democrat candidates of the school for the general election. I hope that you can relate to our policies and hopefully you will vote for us. Thank you for listening. That radio show. Hi, my name is Mohammed and this year I'm running for the Green Party and my first policy is to make sure that all tax loopholes are cut, making sure that all citizens, corporations and businesses pay their fair share of tax so that we can start to fund our projects and cut the deficit. The second policy is I want to abolish tuition fees so that all students can further study their passion. Three, I want to prevent the privatisation of the NHS. And number four, I want to convert our energy sources from fossil fuel ones to renewable ones. And number five, making sure that all un unoccupied housing is used and start to create more social housing to make sure that people have a roof over their head. Thank you. This is the APAC Political Party Broadcast with your host, Zekiel Lewis Griffiths and Luke Land. The first item on our manifesto is the full taxation of the corporations and the closing of corporate loopholes. This money will then be used for very high levels of state welfare, which is our second point on the manifesto. We want free education for all at higher level and lower level with a comprehensive, more prog progressive education system, followed by free health care for all and a generous benefit system, a safety net for all in society. We also wish to pursue a strong renewable energy plan to divert away from our usage of fossil fuels to build Britain a sustainable future. Norway has 98% renewable energy sources and we believe we can do the same here. Number four is drive for a stronger democracy. We want a radical, direct democracy in Britain. None of this false layer of democracy that we seem to have. We want common referenda and other forms of voting that gives everyone representation. We want to bring power back to the people. The fifth item on our agenda is the maximization of individual freedom. This is freedom of the press, freedom of opinion, as much debate in society as possible so that every opinion that someone forms is as much debated. Everyone thinks for themselves as, as much as possible. We have freedom of consciousness and freedom of mind. We want this idea to be spread as much as possible. We think you should vote for APAC for these reasons. We are ideological and we want something different. Vote for APAC and vote for change. Yeah. <laughs> the radio show. Hello, my name's Charlie Roach and I'm one of the UKIP candidates for the school election. Our five point manifesto plan is as follows. The first point is overhauling the current tuition fee system, introducing levels of subsidies based on income. That means people in the lowest bracket of income starting at 60,000 a year will receive 100% subsidisation and also fees for international and EU students will increase to roughly 15,000 a year starting in 2016. Our second point is based on regaining sovereignty from the EU. That means full control over our economy, our borders and our prison system by leaving things like the European Arrest Warrant and the European Declaration on Human Rights. This can happen either through new negotiations where we stay in the EU or through full withdrawal. Our third point is by introducing a Canadian and Australian style point system for immigration 
That means only those people that meet a certain criteria can enter the UK. This criteria will be based on ethnicity, gender, age, and level of education. Our fourth point is introducing a form of citizens' initiative. This means that the people can force the use of referendums when it's deemed necessary for issues they feel that's important. And our fifth point is introducing a system of benefits where immigrants can only apply for benefits and use of the NHS once they've been paying national insurance for at least five years. Thank you. The Brave Show. <laughs> Thank you to all the candidates. Make sure you have a listen and read through the manifestos. And don't forget to vote. We are now moving on to our new segment with Zach and Ali on the Yemen-Saudi Arabia issue. Hi guys, this is your friend Zach. Now we have a small item from the worldly wise Ali Zeta, who has some words to say on current events in Yemen and the Middle East well worth listening to. Go ahead, Ali. Thanks for the legendary introduction, Zach. Uh, well, so guys, I'm going to be discussing the recent events in Yemen and what I'll be arguing is why Saudi Arabia's attack on Yemen is unjustified, in my opinion. The Saudi claim that they are doing this for the benefit of, of Yemen and the people of Yemen. However, its true agenda lies in its support of pro-Saudi Sunni governments. The idea that the Saudis are doing this for the oppressed Sunnis is interesting. Interesting and ironic in the sense that in the summer when thousands of people in Gaza were being slaughtered by the Israeli regime, all of whom were Sunni, Saudi Arabia did not send so much as medical supplies. For the thousands, many of whom children who were injured got nothing and they had to deal with what they got. It is interesting how Saudi Arabia is showing off its military capabilities in Yemen with its advanced air force and infantry, yet acted like it didn't even have an, a military when it strongly condemned Israel's actions, which is kind of a funny statement in itself. I suppose the point I'm trying to make is that if the Saudi government is truly acting in the support of oppressed Sunnis, why has it done nothing for the people of Gaza, all of whom are Sunni Muslims? Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Ali. These are all things we should be spending a lot more time questioning. And we should be happy we have someone like Ali to do it for us. Thank you, Ali, for your input. If you have any opinions, feel free to let us know on our Facebook page. Now onto the school news section. Joanna interviewed Jean Matthews after the school lead-day debates. Okay, so Jean, just a quick question for QK Radio. Um, just want to know um, what made you want to do this with QK specifically in general, students? I think that QK is an inspiring school and we were keen to be involved where we could. Um, we thought it would be a good opportunity to meet with the students, be able to offer some of our experience and, and, and really try to tell them what life is like in the profession itself. So it was really about trying to give a bit back Basically, we are all lawyers now, and we're qualified and we want to be in a position where we are contributing to society in a wider way. Cool. And how do you think this would have benefited Lee Day as much as QK? Well, I think that uh, a lot of our lawyers who are involved are having that interesting experience of being exposed to those uh, young students who are just about to start on their um, degrees and what have you. And I think that it's enriching. It's a, an experience to be involved with somebody who's just starting out in life. And it gives that individual the opportunity to um, pass on some of the knowledge that they've actually picked up. And just in general, what do you think of QK students and their involvement in the debate? Uh, it's, it's a marvellous um, debate, actually. They're always, always very interested, motivated students. And, you know, long may it continue. Year after year, the, the, the debate seems to get better, and I hope that continues. OK, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanna and Jean. We would like to congratulate Sarah Bentra and Sarah Harb from Year 12 on winning an internship placement over the summer due to their amazing debate skills. And here's a little message to everyone from Miss Worthington. Good day, people. I am so honoured to be invited to speak on the That Radio FM inaugural show. It's Mrs Worthington from Year 13. Just a few tips I'd like to share with my Year 13 hard-working students. Tips to survive the spring break. Remember, work hard. Drink water. Go to the library. Read a book or an article. Go to a free museum or an exhibition. Um, do remember to come back on the 21st of April. However, if you're doing an EPQ presentation, you must come to school on the 20th. And if you're in year 12 and you want to see some excellent presentations, you come in that day too. Look out for the posters. Have fun. See you next month.
Bye. Oh, Joanna, you actually write Miss Worthington like Miss Worthington writes Miss Worthington. Does that make any any sense whatsoever? <laughs> Just a bit of bants in the studio, guys. Yeah, indeed. Um, anyway, thank you, Miss. We hope you have a good holiday as well. That radio show. Yeah! And here is the fitness segment from the student production team. This is Luke's top exercise of the week. This week's top exercise is the diamond push-up. The diamond push-up is performed by placing your hands in a diamond shape under your chest and pushing away. This exercise works your chest and your triceps and can also be performed at home. Oh, thank you very much for your message, uh, Luke. Your biceps are looking exquisite from here. V very, very nice. Um, well defined, well toned. The six pack isn't coming through quite yet though. <laughs> thank you very much. You are listening to That Radio FM! This is officially our first radio show run by students here at QK and we would like to thank everyone and we look forward to delivering more in future. And it's goodbye from me, Joanna, George, Yilaf, Luke, and Omar, and of course, Zek. Have a lovely half time, guys, and we look forward to seeing you after the holiday. See you, see Don't have see too you. much fun. Goodbye. And revise hard. Revise, revise. Revise, revise. Hit the gym. Revise, revise. Yes, yeah, <laughs> hit the gym, yeah. Gym. 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 Revise. Radio <laughs>